Uh, hello, my name is Ingrid Jankner. I'm director of Mount St. Vincent University Art Gallery in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And I want to talk to you about our exhibition, Arthur Lismer, Halifax Harbour in Wartime. Now we mounted this exhibition in 2013 in anticipation of the centennial anniversary of the Great War, also known as World War I. And all of the works in the exhibition come from local collections. And I'd just like to thank uh, the people at Dalhousie Art Gallery, Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, and Nova Scotia College of Art and Design for lending the paintings and lithographs. Uh, this painting by Arthur Lismer, Halifax Harbour, Time of War, is probably the most resolved uh, painting in the exhibition. And so I thought that's why we'll start with it. Also, it gives a very good geographical overview of the Bedford Basin, which is the innermost reach of Halifax Harbour and measures about 20 miles in circumference. Arthur Lismer, while living in Halifax, uh, was a resident of Bedford, which is a small town on the shores of the basin. And of course, Mount St. Vincent University overlooks Bedford Basin, so uh, thematically this picture is perfect for our, our art gallery. Um, Arthur Lismer emigrated from Sheffield, England in 1911 and uh, landed in Toronto. And in 1916, he was appointed principal of the Victoria School of Art and Design, which is now the Nova Scotia uh, College of Art. Um, he stayed there until 1919. Before Lismer came here, he aspired to be uh, a landscape painter. And he was already acquainted with several members of the future Group of Seven, of which he became a founding member in 1920. All of these painters felt that the Canadian landscape was uh, so unique that, in a sense, it defined the nation. And their project was to find a way of painting the landscape which would um, present it as a symbol of the Canadian nation. I'm saying this because the painting is distinctly unwarlike. You'll notice the um, pastel color scheme, the pink sky, uh, the pale blue. Uh, also, the warships in the foreground and middle distance are not the main subject of the painting in any sense. You, you can see that the horizon is very low. I would say that Lismer's principal interest as an artist in this scene was in the sky. And that shows the influence of the great British landscape painter John Constable on his way of imagining things. Um, also possibly the uh, work of the Impressionists in France, the uh, very sweet palette, the pinks and blues and so on. Um, I included this picture in the exhibition because it does show in the foreground a troop ship painted in dazzle camouflage. Uh, dazzle camouflage was uh, applied by all of the Allied nations uh, to their uh, fleets because it was thought to confuse the um, German submarines that were sighting on the ships. Uh, a variety of artists designed uh, geometric patterns to be applied to the sides of the ships. Um, in fact, after the war it was, it was concluded that dazzle camouflage did not work, but at least it gave work to a, a number of artists and their imaginations. So you can see that the, uh, the dazzle on the ship is colored so uh, that it picks up the colors of the surface of the water, the greens and the blues, whereas the ship on the, uh, in the background on the far left has the purple hues and lavenders of the hills uh, alongside Bedford Basin. Um, Again, um, the color scheme of the landscape and that of the ships is made to blend together so that uh, the artist is incorporating the dazzle camouflage, which would normally be quite bizarre, uh, into an overall color scheme of the painting. I just want to point out how dazzle camouflage works by uh, pointing out this ship, which is outlined against the shore. You can see that the uh, purple lavender camouflage on it um, pretty much matches the purplish bluish hues of the hills behind. This is an effect of aerial perspective which causes colors to turn blue in the distance. Another feature of this camouflage is it seems to establish a profile of a ship that's much lower in the water <coughs> than, the, um, than the, the boat we're looking at and possibly from the positioning of the funnels and so forth a uh, person standing at a periscope in a submarine would mistake this for two ships. 
So this ship does illustrate some of the optical illusions performed by dazzle camouflage, which could break up a large object to seem like uh, many more objects, and also the idea that it uh, makes the ship seem lower in the water and therefore further away. Shibukto Head um, is near the mouth of Halifax Harbour, in contrast to the Bedford Basin, which is the furthest, innermost reach of the harbour. So this is looking out to the open ocean from Shibukto Head. The painting is entitled View from Shibukto Head. And um, I included this painting um, because this is where Lismer's interest in landscape um, coincides or overlaps with uh, strategic considerations. Um, first of all, looking at the landscape, you can see that the sky is very bright, uh, but the clouds are very heavily modeled so that they almost mirror the rocks below. There's um, a real congruence between the sky and the shapes of the land. The horizon line almost divides the painting in half. Uh, lengthwise, and this adds to the, the sense of a mirror illusion going on. So those are the aesthetic considerations that probably interested Arthur Lismer. Another is the color, which seems rather improbable, such bright greens um, and blues, especially in a, in a clouded sky like that. So the colors are improbably bright and decorative, and um, but that was a sign of, of the influence on Lismer of his friend Tom Thompson, who was um, very adept at Art Nouveau uh, decorative effects in landscape. The thing about this uh, marine landscape is its emptiness, what you don't see, and of course what the British Admiralty, which was, controlled the harbour uh, during World War I, was looking for all the time was German submarines. Um, they are not visible, but given the date of the painting, we can assume they are present, and there were submarine chasers and submarine nets in the harbor at all times. So uh, this is a seemingly peaceful and typically Nova Scotian landscape, but its date makes you think twice. Okay, this little painting, Dazzle Ship at Night, dates from, um, 1916 to 1918. It might have been executed before or after the big Bedford Basin picture with pink skies. And of course it's a much smaller painting so the handling is much looser. It's much less conventional and academic uh, in the handling of the surface. And as we look at this dazzle ship at night, we should remember that Arthur Lismer had tremendous difficulties getting access to the waterfront. And this was mostly because of um, well, military uh, strategic reasons. It seemed that, uh, of course, no one was allowed to photograph at that time, but there was great suspicion of painters or people who were making drawings. So he had to sneak about. Um, here's an instance of that. This is a troop ship, which has been uh, painted in dazzle camouflage. Um, and you can barely pick it out against the night sky and the night ocean. Um, one of the interesting features of this scene for Lismer may have been the problem of figure and ground. And this is a problem that has preoccupied painters for centuries. Um, so you have a choice. You can make your principal subject, which here would be the ship, stand out against its background, or you can make it blend in. You know, which are you going to do, and what kind of effect will that have? So he's elected to allow the ship to become almost invisible, which of course it is camouflaged and so on. It's supposed to be that way. Um, but it is an interesting uh, exercise in very low contrast of hues the, uh, and extremely low contrast of values so that unless you look at it carefully, it's hard to discern the shape of the ship. This is a small uh, painting that's untitled, but it does show troop ships near Halifax Harbor, um, and it's undated. I want to continue with that theme of figure ground problems now, because uh, I hope you can see the three ships. I'll point them out. One, two, three. Um, to me, it's uh, up in the air, what is behind the ships? Is that a bank of cloud, or is it uh, actually the shore? It's hard to tell. But the way that Lismer has painted that bank of cloud or, or landmass um, shows some of the geometric uh, patterning that goes on in dazzle camouflage. And you can see 
we really can't tell. It's an ambiguous part of, of the landscape, whether that's a solid area or whether it is cloud. And indeed, he's put the ships uh, in front of it in colors that blend in um, with that, with that mass in the background so that the ships are just barely discernible. So he is experimenting with uh, figure ground contrast. He's, he's trying to reduce it as much as possible and still have a discernible representational composition. Um, by this time, of course, French painters such as Braque and Picasso had begun practicing cubism in which uh, objects are broken down into facets and the background is faceted as well so that the object appears to blend into the background. Uh, Lismer would not have been unaware um, of these advances in painting and yet uh, he was far from wanting to participate in the movement toward abstract painting himself. I think the dazzle camouflage on the ships gave him a pretext for experimenting with these methods of depicting a figure in front of a background. This painting is entitled Convoy at Night and its date is 1916 to 1918. Halifax uh, was a strategic embarkation point during World War I um, for troop ships and uh, convoys of Allied cargo that were heading across the Atlantic. And um, from time to time, the Bedford Basin would be simply filled with convoys uh, awaiting to depart for Europe. In this case, the uh, convoy is traveling uh, on the open ocean. Uh, it's early evening, and you can see a streaky sky near the horizon, which is very reminiscent of dazzle camouflage. Um, Lismer, of course, did not travel on any of the convoys. He stayed on land. And he had a, a Canadian Naval Patrol officer make drawings while um, he was traveling on a convoy, and, and he mailed them back to Lismer, and Lismer used those as the basis for this composition, which repeats again in his lithographs for the war records. Um, the convoys were generally formed of uh, warships surrounding cargo ships. Uh, cargo ships were extremely slow moving, unlike the troop ships and therefore they needed um, an escort across the ocean. This is one of the lithographs that were commissioned from Arthur Lismer for the War Record Office. He did receive his commission as an, an official war artist in 1918, and this was quite unusual because artists were generally um, in Europe uh, recording what was going on in um, combat. But uh, owing to the influence of Lord Beaverbrook, uh, Arthur Lismer was able to get the commission for a new kind of representation of war, which was called the homework. So everything that was being done in Canada um, to sustain and win the war. Um, this, there's a series of lithographs. We don't have them all in the exhibition. But I just wanted to point out uh, the convoy at sea because the composition is nearly identical to that of Convoy at Night. And of course, artists do this. Once they achieve uh, a composition that works, they can repeat it in various media. Um, lithography is a print medium in which the artist draws on a specially prepared limestone. And so you can see the very spontaneous and uh, assured drawing style that Lismer de deployed here. You can see that um, he's concerned that the, the ships and so forth should appear as in as much detail as possible, so he's made it a daytime scene. Um, and I guess in, in most ways it's, it's very similar to the painting that we just looked at, except that the representation of the warships has now gained precedence over representing an interesting set of uh, hues in the sky or whatever. We are looking at, an, almost at the illustration level, at an illustration of Canada's war effort in terms of naval patrol on the transatlantic routes. This is another in the series of the war records lithographs. It depicts the transport Aquitania in 1918. It's a very dramatic moment in the war. It's two weeks after Armistice Day and the Aquitania is bringing back the Canadian troops from Europe. So it's kind of the, the final um, piece of, of the entire war scene. Um, the, you'll notice the dazzle camouflage on the ship is ironically almost the shape of a bullseye target, but never mind that, um, the Aquitania did survive World War I. 
and in fact went on to service as a troop ship again in World War II. Its sister ships were the Lusitania, which was sunk, and the Mauritania. And all three of these ships belonged to the Cunard Line, which was the competitor for the White Star Line, whose ships were the Titanic and the Olympic. And the Olympic was also used as a, as a troop ship during the war. Uh, and this was a luxury uh, cruise liner that had been um, convert, uh, converted, I guess refitted, um, to ship Canadian troops. And it was built in 1914 and went out of service in 1950. So it's uh, one of the last four funnelers uh, surviving um, and proved to be a very useful and speedy ship. <laughs>